Okay, hello. Um, this is a <laughs> an art-centric video. So um, now I actually have something that I think is worth showing a little bit of. It's not complete yet, but um, this is going to be my new D&D uh, player character journal. So um, here we go then. <laughs> Um, this is a prototype, essentially. I'm just kind of mapping things out because I'm doing things a little bit differently than uh, Jenny D did with hers. Um, I'm using the same journal, but I added uh, this here. And um, I'm going to have a list in the description of all of the tools that I used um, and I'm planning on using right here can see this is the exact one that I used, rose gold, um, from Krylon. Um, I mean, you could use any paint pen, I think, and whatever color you really would want. I kind of wanted a copper tone, like a warm uh, color, so rose gold gave me this and it worked out pretty well. Um, I had used a piece of paper, um, printout of, of this design that I set up in uh, Photoshop and then on the piece of paper I used graphite to create a shadow essentially of of that uh, image like I, I took it and I drew on top of it like traced over it a lot and I had a lot of graphite there and then I put the piece of paper face down on the journal and I rubbed it onto the uh, fake leather here. So that gave me my uh, really light outline to work with. And then I just took a ruler and uh, did the, the paint pen and made that. So that's how I <laughs> did that thing. This is a little development update thing. And um, when I have the finished product, I'll do a video of that then. Um, but it's kind of nice and soothing to just have like a little craft project that you're working on and you can just do it your own pace, you know? Um, so this is just scrap paper here. Um, I kind of like how I can take a piece, uh, a piece of like regular US size paper and just uh, cut it in half and then I can use that as scrap when um, I have like a bad print or something. So I can just reuse. Um, this is going to be a um, introductory page uh, for my character rune. I'm probably going to do my own custom portrait art. This was just a picture I found online of some, some beautiful lady. Uh, so I could have like some visual for my character when, when we're playing. Um, and her hair uh, got turned blue during the course of the campaign, so it's you know, uh, I want to I want to make either a uh, bust or a a full um, picture of her and uh, decorate it nicely. Uh, I was thinking of using this postcard that I had gotten when I ordered some really nice uh, pins. Um, hopefully, I remember uh, to set, put up a link in the description. Um, I had uh, ended up buying some really cute pins for my other D&D party because our campaign is coming to a close and I wanted to get uh, pins for each of our classes and uh, the DM. So I had ended up getting this cute little thing with it and I was like, oh, I can utilize this. Because um, it kind of works for her character. She is a cleric, a life cleric, and uh, this looked reasonable enough to use. Um, and she, uh, her deity is the Everlight, so I kind of did a bullet journal-esque little spread here of um, the commandments for her god. So this way, um, I always have them there to like be mindful. And my current idea is to have a, a page like this for her personality traits, like her flaw and her bond. Um, just so that they kind of pop out to me while I'm playing and it's just like a grounding thing for role play. Like these are her core beliefs and properties to her personality. Um, so yeah, this page is obviously very rough. 
because I was still trying to figure out the sizing and I knew I, I kind of needed to cut for um, this binder metal piece. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> um, so, so and, and I didn't really care about the look of it yet. Uh, I just wanted to get all of the data figured out, like how I wanted to organize it for each, pe uh, for each page and then go from there. Um, so uh, I just printed out everything like she eventually gets three channel divinities as she levels up, but um, I just put this in red. So that way I only had to print out the one copy in theory. And then I just erase that when it's unlocked. I'm not sure whether I like that idea or not. I feel like with D&D sheets, you reprint, re yeah. <laughs> you reprint them uh, eventually anyway. And since I'm trying out using a uh, pencil um, rather than dry erase, because I have these little plastic pieces, I feel like pencil, it feels way better if you feel more grounded, like you're you're in the experience because you're writing something on a piece of paper. I don't know what it is, but I like that. So I set it up this way and I'm realizing I'm going to have to print out new copies every once in a while. So maybe it's just would be easier to um, mask out these things and then uh, as she levels up, print out a fresh sheet um, and then just use this for scrap paper or something because uh, due to the fact that this is actually really thick uh, cardboard paper, um, I didn't want to have anything uh, on the back of these pieces of paper that I was going to be writing on um, because it's not flat. And then also I have these rings in the way and being right-handed means that it's it's just awkward. So for this layout, um, it's it's just single pieces of paper like this. And once they're used up, I can use the back as scrap paper. So I thought that that would be a good compromise for the fact that it's um, it's just kind of a little wasteful in, in this sense. Um, so then I have all of the upfront data that I think I would need at any given time in a role play or combat situation where um, I need to strategize. So this has like all my long short rest uh, information, what spell slots I have left, uh, madness because we're playing, um, oh gosh, I, I keep on getting the name of it wrong. Um, cause it's, it's the abyss campaign, but I always forget the, the beginning part, like not beyond the abyss, <laughs> it's not beyond, or into the, the, the abyss, I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we're in the Underdark and madness is a thing. And um, having having this and the hit points and speed and dark vision and all the data, I thought this would be a good layout that would work for me um, and work for the character that I have. And I have a little reminder here, item charges that I wrote in pencil because I realized afterwards this is another thing for me to be way more mindful of, that I have items that do have long and short rest charges that I can take uh, use of. And uh, in the past, with my big um, character sheet, like it, it just, things were getting lost in the weeds. So I really wanted to create something that just keeps my focus. Um, and this is something that I think I'm going to, I'm definitely going to want to reprint out and, and work more on. Um, I forgot to put the Decisible of Life thing up here at the top in print. This is very important for my character because she does do extra healing with her healing spells. And I need to remember that, especially in combat where it really matters and I'm trying to heal someone. Um, oh, is this? camera tilting a little oh my goodness there's no way for me to um to, I mean I, I should probably get some kind of thing to anchor it in place it's a very professional uh developer update thing <laughs> um and uh yeah this being here just adds to the content density of this so I think this is going to be a piece of paper where yeah I mask out these um, 
levels of spells, so I just don't even have to look at them. You can see I even did a mask layer note here. Um, and I was thinking of color coding my spells, so I have an idea of uh, what they are at a glance because I don't always remember all of them. I just have my go-tos, really. Um, but it's it's a good thing to, to really know your skill set. Um, so down here I have uh, consumable components, uh, things that require like diamonds and stuff, um, and then uh, expensive or unique components in green. So uh, these are things that require like a very specific item, like a pearl for identify, that has a, uh, a price tag, so you actually have to have the item. You can't just use a focus like a wand or a holy symbol and call it a day. So it's good for me to mark down uh, what spells are special in that regard that I need to have specific things for. And then the yellow is for healing. I could not write that down <laughs> and have it visible in my little special box. Um, oh, and that's another thing, uh, in this previous page, I actually, I have a blank box here, um, because I wasn't quite sure what to use the space for, and then I realized that it actually would be really good to have a little scratch pad. I do have my scrap paper here, um, so I could be just using that in, um, a combat situation, but I actually found that this was really useful to just kind of write down generally what my next move will be for my turn in combat and that way I just have like I can just flip back and forth and not have to deal with other pieces of paper around where this is really good for role play notes of just needing to jot down a name really fast and then write my notes uh, cleaner later. Um, so yeah this just feels a little bit cluttered right now I want it to feel better so I'm working on how how to do that um, and I have, uh, the bees written here as bonus, uh, yeah, bonus action. Um, so I have that down for myself. <laughs> um, but yeah, it just, it doesn't quite jive with me, this page. So this is something that I'm going to still think about. Um, does it, it is a lot of information right there in your face unfortunately. Um, and I haven't set up the other character sheet pages yet for, um, or maybe just one, I think now, um, for her abilities, like the languages she knows, um, and, uh, tools that she knows, weapons that she knows and stuff like that. I'm still working on that one and having it be, um, those kind of proficiencies plus, um, her weapon uh, information, attack roll, damage rolls. Um, and I was thinking of if there's room to add in um, shorthand information for some of her aggressive spells that she uses or cantrips, um, like Toll of the Dead, and just have that information right there up front so I don't have to spend a few seconds looking it up and slowing my turn down or freaking myself out because I've forgotten something. Uh, this is just, uh, from the player's handbook, um, an extra, I forget, uh, what book the Asmar is from, but that as well. This is all just, um, quick lookup information from the D&D books themselves on what my class is, what my class can do, um, and what my level up track is going to be. So I have uh, information for my short and long rest, like Radiant Soul right here as a, uh, a long rest. Short, short rest is triangle, long rest is diamond. <laughs> um, and I might not know all the specifics uh, by heart about something like this, so then I can quickly flip to it and uh, look at it and read it and know it. Um, like her background being sailor, because it gives you some some extra stuff that you can do. So stuff like that um, just makes it easier and quicker. And that was kind of my goal with all this is uh, to make it 
really uh, helpful for me as a player first and then aesthetically pleasing because you can see that this pe th these pieces of paper um, are they kind of look like the uh, D&D books this, this um, tea stain design um, I'm thinking that I'm I may be doing that with these uh, once I've gotten out of the prototyping stage of using it um, and then I have um, these were actually full-size card sheets that I cut down to fit this small book um, and I accidentally printed out like a random item that I have because I have a few like potions and spell scrolls and stuff I don't think I need um, cards for all of them but ketones ointment is something that I was neglecting in games so now I can better keep track of, of using it and um, my two attunement items and I wanted to have a space for attunement stuff and any uh, very specific extra items that like I can reuse so that way I see them and I know to use them would be good <laughs> Uh, and then I have backpack going full blown bullet journal style, um, where this is just you know, the common stuff in my backpack. Um, and then I have a page set up for uh, potions and scrolls, which are also technically in my backpack as well. Um, but I wanted to kind of break up these items because that was a, another problem I noticed with my original character sheet. It was just a long list of stuff, um, and which was like hard for me to keep track of because it's all jumbled up. So this was another goal for me to kind of organize things. Um, and then I have my equipped items here. Uh, we don't keep track of um, um, how much everything weighs, like your weight limit. Uh, it's kind of kept fast and loose. There are points where it matters, but um, with this, I kind of set it up this way because I'm not really very carefully keeping track of weight. We're just kind of going with what makes sense. Um, so that's essentially her character sheet right there, this section. Um, and like I said, I wanna be adding in those other pages as I go along here. Um, and then after that is uh, my note section. <laughs> um, my character, it's actually kind of um, assimilated itself into the, the, the story itself that uh, she makes a list. She keeps track of what we need to do, where we need to go to get stuff done, um, and then crosses things off when they're done. <laughs> so, it's actually really soothing for me to do this because it it's it's like a quest log in a video game. You just keep track of what your side quests are, your main quests are, um, and it's kind of fun to look back. Um, I don't have my full list from the very beginning, uh, but I did uh, keep uh, my old recordings and I kind of just kept it going so that way I have sort of a summary of our campaign through our achievements. Um, some of these things are kind of personal to my character, like her sending a message to her mom, um, telling her mom that she's okay every month or so. So like I have stuff like that in here. Um, and then I have the shopping list. I'm trying to keep track of that as well, what people um, may need, um, what our group may need, things like that to, to keep us uh, focused for our shopping sessions as well as the selling section um, because some of the players forget things that they could potentially sell so it's just it's nice I like as a cleric being a support class for like everything <laughs> um, and then the mushroom field notes is she she was the one who identified the mushroom the edible mushrooms down in the underdark and got pretty good at knowing what's what so I have notes on that, um, but I also want to do a spread here of just actual mushroom art, doodling a bunch of mushrooms. Um, if there's any official art on any of these, um, I wanted to find it and, and do my own little sketches and, and color them and stuff and have that here. 
And then we have our traveling companions uh, listed so I can remember people's names because that was always something where I was like, oh yeah, these are the NPCs that are with us. But it's just so much more immersive when you know who's who. Um, and it's kind of more impactful when they get grayed out because something happened to them or they left. Um, so I have that and then more notes about demons because that's what the abyss is about and people and places and notes just like stuff like that so that that is what i've got going on here with my D, &D journal and what i was really excited about it and stuff um and that's really all there is to say about it right now i'm just kind of in the process of working on it and getting it done um, for the character that I was starting this on originally, it's kind of good probably that uh, I ended up having to change gears because it allowed me to realize that I need something that's a little bit more lightweight. I was thinking of being way more artsy with it and need to be able to have this be somewhat flexible for different characters because in the end I want to be able to showcase this as well as give you guys the the templates and tools to be able to do it yourselves if you want to. I really love the small form factor. It feels much more cozy. Um, but for that character that I did start on, I do have the one little art spread that I did that I can show you guys. She uh, was an Arakakra, or I mean she is still. We're gonna play her. Uh, we're gonna play that game again, so I'm gonna play her again. Um, I may do another little like map thing in uh, for this campaign just because it was really fun to do <laughs> to draw that out. Um, and I do still have a lot of pressed leaves that I may end up using for this character. Um, they are kind of problematic though, the stems, because it creates a non-flat surface. So I was learning a lot of things while I was doing this and seeing what I could get away with creatively. So that's, uh, this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed, um, totally leave me comments and your thoughts, um, cause that can only help make this project better. Um, and if you want to see anything in particular. And I guess that's, that's it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.